Welcome to worship with the Lutheran Church of our Savior. Welcome to our guests and our family and our friends and our members who are here today gathered to celebrate the third Sunday in Advent. We continue our preparations for the coming of God into our world, Emmanuel, God with us. Some of us have, uh, have really wanted for me to be leading worship in the sanctuary. So here we are. We're going to try it. Um, I want to know, let you know, let me know what you think. Um, I, th I know the sound quality is not the best, and uh, maybe we need to work on that. Uh, but let me know what you think of this. Let's now begin our worship, our Advent worship, with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have hard hearts. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not listened sufficiently to their pain. We have allowed, ignored, and benefited from exclusion and inequity. We have allowed hatred and violence to prosper. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's now sing the gathering song. Together, let us sing wherever you are. Hark the glad sound.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's now time for the children's moment. The children's sermon invite all the kids to come forward, and of course, wherever you are, and of course, it's for everybody, this sermon. Um, I'll see you there. Good morning. Although it might not be morning. I don't know when you're watching this. It might be in the morning. It might be in the afternoon. Or it might be in the evening. It might be the middle of the night. Maybe you couldn't sleep and you got up and you said, I got to watch the children's sermon with Pastor Stefan. So I don't know when, when this is for you, but I do know when this is for you. I do know when this is for all of us. We are now in the season of Advent. Advent, where the color is blue. Advent, which is a special season in the church year. It lasts for four weeks. And the season of Advent is the time when we are looking for the coming of Jesus. The word Advent means coming. And, and so we're looking at Jesus coming to us. First, he's going to be born as a, as, as a baby in the manger. We know about that. But he also promises he's going to come back as a fully grown person. After he, after he died and, and rose again and came back to life on Easter, he promised that he would be coming back. So we're looking for Jesus to come. Coming. And so we count. We count our weeks of Advent. So, this is the third week of Advent. Normally, we have this great big wreath at church. It's a wreath made out of evergreen branches with, with four blue candles on it, big candles. And then we used to, with the children's sermon, when we were all together, you guys would help, you guys would help to light the candles. Well, we're not together right now. We will be one day, but not yet. So let's light these three candles for the first week of Advent, the second week of Advent, and the third week of Advent. And we use this to help us remember to be looking for Jesus and getting ready for him, and being ready to welcome him into our world and say, Jesus, you're the most important person in the world. Jesus, who, who teaches us everything we need to know. Jesus, who shows us how to, how to treat other people. Jesus, who comes to save us. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Thank you, God for sending us Jesus. Help us to watch for him and be ready for him so that we can hear him and feel him and know that he loves us and saves us. Amen. So now, let's watch Miss Ginger light the three candles on the big Advent wreath at church. See you next time.
A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance in our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For all the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up. So the Lord God will cause the righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. According to John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John. When the Judeans sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? John confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I am baptized with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh. 
How's your waiting going? Advent is a time for waiting. It's one of the great themes of Advent is, is the theme of waiting. We are waiting, waiting for Christmas, the Nativity, as we count down the weeks uh, and, until we get to the celebration of the Incarnation, God with us, made flesh. But we're also waiting, we're waiting for, for Jesus to return, whatever that's going to mean, because he promises to do that. In any case, Advent is a theme. The theme is waiting. Waiting. Now, I asked you how your waiting is going, because uh, I think waiting is a little different this year. Now, usually when I think about waiting, you know, every Advent I come back to this, this concept of waiting. And when I think about waiting, I think of waiting rooms, like in doctor's offices or dentist's offices or things like that. That Advent is like being in a waiting room, a great big four-week waiting room. But waiting rooms are different these days. Our experience of waiting is different. So I'm trying to think the last time I was in a waiting room. It's usually for a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment. I haven't done much doctor appointments during the pandemic. I did do a bunch of dentist visits though. So the way it works with a dentist, my dentist has closed his office. His waiting room, I should say. His office is open, but his waiting room is closed. Instead, what you do is you drive up into the parking lot and you call inside to the office. And, and they ask you, what you know, what's your car look like? What color is it? What make and model? And, uh, and they say, okay, we'll be right out. And sure enough, very soon after that, uh, the dental assistant's come, the assistant comes out and uh, takes your temperature and asks you questions about how you're feeling, that kind of stuff. And then they escort you in and you go right through that waiting room and they take you right to your, uh, your, your room, the appointment room, the exam room, whatever's being done. I had, uh, I had some work on my tooth, this molar that had to be repaired. Um, the waiting is gone or it's different. It's short. It's in the car. We're going through. It's a different experience. But I was telling my wife about this, how my experience with the waiting room is different this year. And she said, but that's not everybody's experience. Because she has gone to doctor's offices with her parents, taking with, with her parents there for her their appointments. And they have been sitting in waiting rooms. I said, well, okay, so what are people doing in the waiting rooms? And she, I said, are there... They said, they're doing nothing, she said. I said, are they reading magazines? You know, they put magazines. She said, no, there are no magazines. So what are people doing in the waiting rooms? They're staring. They're staring. What is waiting like for you this Advent? Boy, if we, if we ever had to wait, this is a year in which we've been waiting. We wait to see whether our COVID test was positive or negative. We wait for lear to learn whether school is back in session or not, or what the what is the school going to look like? What is it? What is the linear going to look like? Is it hybrid, in person, online? Da, 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 da. We wait to see what's going to happen with the next wave of, 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 uh, of, of contractions, infections. And most of all, we wait, we wait for a vaccine. And we wait and we wait. And we're being told that it's not going to be a quick thing. In fact, when we first get our vaccine, we're going to have to wait and then get a second vaccine. And then after that, we're, we're going to have to wait because it doesn't actually go into effect for, for a few weeks after that, probably. So we have to, we have to continue to wear the masks and, and, and distance and all those things. We're going to have to wait. And I, I, so I came across one of these calculators. Have you seen this? One of these calculators that takes into account where you live, your age, your health, your occupation. Um, take into account all these things into this calculator, online calculator. 
and it spit out a, 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 a where I am on the waiting list. It'll give you between taking 100 people as a sample. And where you are in that line of 100 people, the one I did actually had a line. And it goes like this, 100 people like this and this and this. This is when you'll get your vaccine. You'll be right here. 93 is me. I'm going to be waiting a long time. Waiting. We've been forced to learn how to wait more than ever before, maybe, as a whole, as a society. But what do we do while we wait? Are we just to stare? To do nothing? John comes along to show us how to wait. He says, look, one more powerful than I is coming. Watch for him. Watch for him. He's coming. He's so much greater than I. You think I'm doing something special? He's going to do. He's the, he's the one. He is the light. Watch for the light, the light of the world. He is the light. And we have to have the light. Because we, are, we wait and we wait and we wait. And you know what? If we don't have the light at the end of the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel, not a biblical image, but we'll use it. You need the light at the end of the tunnel, right? To, to, to show. But if you don't have the light, then you're not really waiting, are you? If you don't have the light that you're focused on and watching for and anticipating then you're not waiting, you're just hopeless. You're in a hopeless void, imprisoned. You're in a prison with no windows, no doors. But that's not us. That like we Christians, we Christians should be the best waiters of all during this pandemic. Because we've been waiting for 2,000 years. We become really good at waiting and, and, and recalculating and finding the meaning behind our waiting. Finding meaning in our waiting. Finding the beauty. The joy. The hope. As we look towards the light. Knowing that all the waiting that we're doing in this life, we have that salvation to look ahead to. We have that fulfillment of the kingdom of God to look at. We look for the light. And so rejoice. And let us walk in that light and watch for God, the incarnation, Emmanuel, God with us. To that, let the church say, Amen. Our hymn of the day, please join me in singing it. I want to walk as a child of the light.
together confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this third Sunday of Advent, we join in prayer as we await God's salvation, responding to each petition with the words, Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of prophets and preachers, strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, and lay leaders. Protect Christians who are persecuted for the faith. While churches await a full return to assembly worship, empower the baptized with your faithful spirit, embed your word in our hearts. We pray for the church. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of creation, grant relief to endangered animals and plants. Protect the rain for us. Provide for those who rely on nature's rhythms for their livelihood. Train us to dwell on this earth in such a way that all people may thrive. We pray for the earth. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of all lands, plant and the leaders of every nation a love of justice and a commitment to serve the common good. Calm tensions in the Middle East and bring peace where civil conflicts rage. Release child soldiers from forced service. Equip regions to rebuild cities that have been destroyed by war. We pray for the nations. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of exiles and wanderers, give a homeland to refugees. Provide housing for those whose dwellings have been destroyed. Protect street people from the cold and be with teenage runaways. Uphold the work of the ELCA Good Gifts, Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, and all disaster relief organizations. Comfort all who feel isolated from others. We pray for all in distress. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of the sorrowing and the brokenhearted, give health to the sick, relief to medical workers, and comfort to mourners. Attend to those with lifelong illness. We beg for an end to the coronavirus and a fair distribution of the vaccines. Receive our prayers for Judith, Ron, Vicki, Marion, Joyce, Lynn, Brandon, Douglas, Terry, Simon and Sarah, Tom, Roberta, Sally, Debbie, Linnea, Lauren, Justin and family, Jackie and Jim, Jackson, Betty, Joe, James, Sandy, Robert, and Tony, Sue, Cynthia and family, Angela and family, Alicia and family, Haven and family, Crystal and family, James and family, Christina and family, Karina and family, Alicia and family, Gallon and family. We pray for all who mourn Marty, Gary, Gwen, Jim, Janet, David, Ray, Mike, Dick. We pray for the sick. Mighty Savior, come and save us. 
God of each one of us, we await peace and justice, health and wholeness. Sustain us as we await your coming. Hear now our unceasing prayers. We pray for ourselves. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of sinners and saints, while facing sadness and death, we grieve yet, we offer you praise for all the saints, especially for the martyr Lucy, those who have died of COVID-19, and those whose names we call out to you now. At the end, gather us into the joy of your glory. We pray for your salvation. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God beyond all things, God dwelling among us now, receive these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, who came, who comes, and who is coming now and forever. Amen. Let us together pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. 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 During the season in which we are buying gifts, we are giving gifts. I invite you to spend time with God. Thank God for the gifts that you have been given. All the ways that God has blessed you in abundance. And pray about how you will share those gifts with others, with the church, to God's ministry in the world through the church. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The sending song is Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. Let us sing. <laughs>
Amen.